Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GiveMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to talk about blocking the bad guys with Blacklist on your OpenSense. Let's get started. All right, here we are. Here is our OpenSense and we're going to follow, we're going to create some aliases in here and we're going to be able to download these lists to protect us, right? So how do we do that? Where do we get them? Well, that's pretty straightforward. So you might be wondering, well, what are Blacklists? Well, so out there, there are there are lots of blacklists that are available to be used, and uh, some of them, you know, are set up for different areas. You know, they're maintained by emerging threat, uh, ransomware, things like that. So one of the places that I find really good source to just find these is, you know, you may have heard of the Firehole project. Well, Firehole blacklist IP sets from GitHub. It's a great list to get going. So you can go to that website also. And, and this is a different different project. Um, and so it has a lot of information about IP addresses, right? So check out this. Let me just scroll down to the, down to the bottom here a little bit once we get past all the files to the markup file, the readme for this. And it's gonna talk about a little bit about what this does, but I'm gonna just say, we're gonna stop right here where what is blacklist, block list, why do you need them? Here it kind of tells you, but basically um, there's, it help, they can help you detect malware, virus, intrusion, uh, and things like that. And so there's a lot of bad bad actors out there trying to get in your network or when you're compromised internally, get out of your network into the command and control centers and we use to fight stuff. All right. So you read through this. This is an interesting, interesting thing. So uh, you can take a look. And right here, they have a recommendation on level one for what they do, the basic security against well-known attackers, minimum false positives, blah, blah, blah. Well, so basically, you have spam hoss, de-shield, de uh, and abuse. So those are those are a great starting points. So let's just take a look at, um, so you, you take a look at this abuse CH, right? So I'm just going to call that, I'm going to open up a new tab here, and I'm just going to dump that in there. And so you're going to go to this website, fighting malware and bot nets, right? So you go here and they've got these different blacklists and everything you choose. Let's look at, look at this one right here. You go here, um, you can download it, click on download, and then you've got plain text, JSON, um, some setups for some other firewalls and things like that, uh, Suricata. Um, but if you click on the plain list, you click on that and boom, and here's a bunch of IP addresses that it's going to go in the block, right? And, and so you can go through this list and I'll scroll down just a little bit farther and you're going to see a whole bunch of, of lists, right? So here, here are the ones that this is available here on this. And then it just kind of helps you give an idea. You can go through these and pick the ones that best fit you. Um, and you can enable, disable, depending on how things work. So just scroll through these and look at the ones that, you know, might be of interest to you. In my particular case, I'm going to go to the emerging threats that is part of proof that Proofpoint does. So we're going to let's see if I can find that one in here. And we're going to do, so if I do this search for ET, it's going to probably take forever because everything is, so we're going to go to emerging. All right, so as I scroll down here, Here's emerging threats, right? So you see this emerging threats.net. Well, if we open that up. We go over here. That is actually, this is actually going to redirect, and I'll just do it here redirect to Proofpoint, right? So if you're unfamiliar with Proofpoint, uh, that is a company that, uh, that some of their solutions they have is uh, encrypted email and, and spam blocking everything plugins for email services. It's actually a service that we we actually resell uh, for to some of our clients depending on their needs. But one of the things they offer is a uh, blacklist that's a compilation. So you can you can go through their website and um, you can find it. Uh, let's see if we can it takes a little while to get through here and to find the uh, the link to get to it. But I, so I digress. I've actually, here's the list and let me show you how to get to it from here. So when you're here, this, there's a link right here, right? So if you go to that and you download it, um, it's going to bring you this list, right? Okay. So one of the things I want to say about this list is all these links over to the side, you, you, you may or may not get what you're looking for because this is designed for firehole and it's not exactly used for this. We're kind of just using this as a 
a starting point to find the list that we want. So you click on some of these and it's going to give you a list, whereas some of them are going to make you um, go jump through some hoops to get the list and sign in, maybe do some other stuff. So you you want to check these out and pick the ones and, and explore them before you just dump them in here into your open sense. Okay. So that being said, let's just take a look at this emerging threats one. So I clicked on the link and so let me go back to that. So here's our emerging threats block list. So if I click here, this site has a really nice list of information about this blacklist. I think it's great. So I've got that over here. And so first of all, this IP list of Firehole will give you this information. So we're looking at this particular emerging threats one from Truthpoint, right? So it's gonna to talk to you, tell you a little bit about this drop list, the evolution of this drop list, um, and you've got all this information you can look at, and, and you've got a history of this drop list to show like unique IP addresses, how it's changing, so on and so forth, right here. Country maps, so you're like where, where the IPs are, um, using MaxMine, Geo, GeoLite too. So if you, if you didn't watch my previous video on how to set up geo blocking on OpenSense, um, you might want to do that. So you can do the geo blocking if you want. And that's where this data here is from. So age of the list, retention policies, overlaps. So this overlap is what I want to talk about a little bit. This this is a great tool to decide whether you want to use this list in conjunction with another list. Or is this going to get you everything you want? So if you go to the OpenSense documentation, they're going to kind of show you how to do this with spam hoss. And but we're going to do this with this list. And I want you to notice that like um, this table down here shows you like what's included in this list. So I have I have this sorted by there there, which is um, what this list contains. So. If you get this list, you're getting 100% of spam hoss drop, this emerging thread spot, spam hoss, the D shield here, and all this. So you're getting all this. You also have overlaps and getting stuff out of many of these other ones here, right? So that being said, you're getting most of the spam hoss and a couple of things when in this particular uh, combined list. Now, so let me take a look at the list real quick. And so if you look at the list, it's going to tell you the emerging threats right here and what's included. So if you see right here, it even talks about getting using spam hoss, using D shield, using abuse, and here they are. Where they come from, I'm gonna scroll on down here. You're gonna see, um, so spam, ha spam hoss. So all these things are in this list. So it's a good, good choice to use when you're doing this. So now let's go back over to our open sense. So one of the things you might be wondering is like, why, why are we doing these blacklists? Aren't there better tools? Didn't we do um, uh, X, Y, Z previously? Yes. So what happens is there are multiple ways to do things and multiple ways to protect yourself. And so one of the, one of the ways, GOIP blocking, uh, Zen Armor, um, Suricata, that's built, that is part of the intrusion detection prevention system that's built into OpenSense, and Blacklist. So you can use all, num, or none, or some of these things in your journey. Now, one of the things you might want to consider is like, you know, as you, you build these things in, you know, how much, how much CPU memory processing and logging does this, this take up on your firewall? So when you're using such as a Zen Armor, or Suricata, you know, they're doing some extra processing and things like that that can be intensive on your firewall. Whereas like a block list is maybe a little, a little less resource intense. So you can do a blocking using a, a black list and have a little less of a performance impact. At least that's the way I believe. I'm pretty sure that that matches up. Um, your results are going to vary as, as your hardware and stuff is concerned. So what do we want to do? Well, first of all, you're starting out in your dashboard. We're going to go down here. We're going to go to interfaces. Sorry. We're going to go down to firewall. We're going to go to aliases. So in here, you're going to notice 
I already put a, a spam host one, which so that's what I have in here already. So I'm going to actually show you that. And so here's the spam host one. And if you wanted to add these in individually, you totally can. So spam host gave it a name. It's a URL table. Um, you can give it categories. Um, you can do, you set up the refresh frequency and then you put the URLs in here and description, right? That's how this works. So I'm going to show you, and then you're going to create rules based on this. So we're going to create a new one for the emerging threat. So we're just going to go up here, right? Like this. We're going to call it proof point ET emerging threat. And it's going to be a URL table, right? And so then we're going to go over here. We're going to get this URL and my bet, and we're going to paste that in here, right? So we also want this to update. How often do you want it to take? Zero hours, well, zero days, 12 hours. So basically every 12 hours, right? So category. So you can't, if these categories exist, you can select them, but if they don't exist, you can't add them here for some reason, or at least that's my experience. Um, and then you're gonna give it a description and then hit save. Oh, and then you're gonna notice, oh, well, I. You got to do some things here, right? You didn't like the space. So now you've created your alias. And now we're going to need to go and create rules. So we're going to go over the rules. We're going to go to the WAN side. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to block any traffic coming in from this black blacklist as a source to any destination on our, on our network, which is Basically the same thing we did with the GOIP light one. And I was just seeing here for my spam host blacklist. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to change this to block. Interface is WAN. Direction is in. And I believe this is an IPv4 only list. Yeah, I didn't see anything but IPv4. So we're going to leave it at that. You can do this if it is a mixed list, right? All right, so protocol any um, source, that's when we're going to click on that. We're going to go on up here to our proof point emerging threat, destination any, right? Category, this is where we're going to call it proof point ET. And we're going to prefix that with BL. This is blacklist, right? So now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to call it a boom. And then, you know, we're going to go ahead and log and click save. So you'll see that right here, boom, boom, boom. Now, order matters, so it's gonna hit this, this, and then this. And if you wanna change it, so we say we wanna move this proof point ahead of this spam host file. Click here, and then you go up to that one, and you say, move selected rule before this rule. And you hit that, and so now you see that proof point is above that. So I'm actually gonna disable Bam host one because technically it's a duplication right there. So we hit apply and boom. So now we have our WAN rule set up that anything coming in that that sources from an IP in those in that range is going to get blocked. Okay. Now you might be wondering, well, what about if I've got some bad guys compromised machines internally? Well, you can create a LAN rule that goes says if it's going out to those, then it will block them too. So we're going down here this land rule. I'm going to just go ahead. I'm going to show you different things. So I've got this spam host one. So I have this spam host one already in here, but I'm going to clone this guy, right? And and so this would be an easy way to show you, like if you got if you're making several of these, that you can actually clone them, copy them to this to new rules. So that's what we're doing here. So it's block. LAN interface, direction out, IPv4, any protocol, source, our local network. Um, and if you have VLANs, you're going to want to swap those up on there too. If you have a something like that, or maybe you have a uh, a guest network that you want to, so you'd want to include that guest network in here so that if you have any compromised machines on your guest network, that they can't talk to these bad locations anyway. All right. So then you go to destinations. I had spam host since this is a copy. We're going to go change that to, to the proof point as a destination, right? And we're going to change that category. 
And since I already got this proof point in here, so we're going to just change that to where that fits this. And this is blacklist spam hawks. Rob, we're going to go and change it to blacklist proof point. Right? And you can even say out or something like that if you want. Source any, boom, boom, boom. Right? And logging is checked. So we hit save and then hit apply. Right? So now the way we have this set up is, oop, and then I enable the rule because uh, when I copied the rule originally, it was from a disabled rule, right? So now you have that. And so your machine is protected in and out using this proof point list. So go, go figure out the ones you want. Okay, so there you have it. That's how to set up the blacklist to protect your network using Proofpoint and any of the other ones you might want to get from that list I showed you. We'll see you next time. If you got something out of this, go ahead and smash the like button. Subscribe to my channel. Every bit of that helps. If you want to hit me with, with a uh, super thanks or something like that, that would be great too. We'll see you next time.